On December 30th, 2019, Li Wenliang, an ophthalmologist who worked at Wuhan Central Hospital in China, saw a patient's report which showed a positive result with a high confidence level for SARS coronavirus. He later sent a message via WeChat to his medical school contacts, warning his colleagues that seven patients had been quarantined at Wuhan Central Hospital after coming down with a respiratory illness that seemed similar to the SARS coronavirus. The seven quarantined patients had all worked at or visited the nearby Wuhan Seafood Wholesale Market. Li asked the group members to inform their families and friends to take protective measures. Later screenshots of his WeChat messages were shared on Chinese forums and gained huge attention. Li's manager reprehended him for leaking the information. Because communication is so monitored in China, just four days later, Li was detained by police for spreading false rumors and he was forced to sign a police document to admit he had breached the law and had seriously disrupted social order. He was then made to sign a letter of admiration, promising not to do it again. The police warned him that if he failed to learn from the admonition and continue to violate the law, he would be prosecuted. A week after Lee sent the messages, the first death from coronavirus was confirmed. After the warning, Lee returned to work, and on January 7th, he contracted the virus himself. Lee later checked himself into the hospital he worked at to receive treatment. From his hospital bed, Lee continued to post on his Weibo account and speak out against misinformation. He also published his experience in the police station and the letter he had to sign on social media. It later transpired that Lee was one of eight people detained in Wuhan for spreading rumors and people started to question why the doctors who gave earlier warnings were silenced by the authorities. Lee died of the coronavirus early on February 7, 2020 at Wuhan Central Hospital, where he had been in intensive care for three weeks. He was just 33 years old, leaving behind his pregnant wife and one child. Not only did Lee's friends and family mourn his passing, but so did the entire world, and China's Supreme People's Court condemned Wuhan authorities' investigations into people like Li, who shared early information about the virus, stating the following. So why did the Wuhan authorities try to silence Li and the other doctors who wanted to warn the public about the outbreak of coronavirus? Surely it would have been better that instead of trying to quell rumors, they concentrated their efforts on putting measures in place to ensure it didn't spread. In this video, we'll look at why the Chinese government appeared to want the outbreak covered up, and in doing so, were partially responsible for its spread. But first, we will look at what the virus is, the effect it has on our bodies, and how dangerous it is compared to other pandemics. We do not want to tell any untruths in this video about the symptoms and how to stop the spread. So a lot of the information we have obtained on the virus is in line with the World Health Organization's guidelines. Let's begin. Coronaviruses are a large family of viruses that cause illness ranging from the common cold to more severe diseases such as Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, or MERS, and Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome, SARS. The new strain of coronavirus that is causing the latest outbreak is known as COVID-19, and although it is related genetically to SARS and MERS, it behaves differently. Coronaviruses are zoonotic, meaning they spread from animals to humans. So is coronavirus any more infectious or dangerous than SARS or MERS, or is it just getting more publicity? Well, the answer is yes, but it's nowhere near as lethal as SARS or MERS. SARS originated in China in 2002 and spread quickly to 27 countries, infecting around 8,000 people and killing 700. But it died out quickly after measures were put in place to contain it. MERS, on the other hand, first emerged in Jordan in 2012, and about 2,500 cases have been identified so far. It's more deadly than SARS, and has claimed nearly 850 lives in total. 
To put this latest outbreak into perspective, SARS is more deadly, but much less infectious than COVID-19, and kills around 14 to 15% of people who catch it. MERS is even more dangerous and kills nearly 35% of those who are infected. However, both of these illnesses are much harder to catch than COVID-19. The most common symptoms of COVID-19 are fever, tiredness, and dry cough. Although some may also experience aches and pains, nasal congestion, runny nose, sore throat, or diarrhea, the symptoms are usually mild and begin gradually. Some people become infected, but don't develop any symptoms and don't feel unwell, although they can still pass the virus on to someone else. Around 80% of people who are infected will recover from the disease without needing special treatment. However, older people and those with underlying health conditions may become seriously ill, requiring hospitalization, which can be fatal. The disease is spread from person to person through small droplets from the nose or mouth, which are spread through coughs or exhales. When these droplets land on objects and surfaces and other people touch them and then touch their eyes, nose or mouth, they are at risk of contracting the disease. The virus may persist on surfaces, anything from a few hours to several days. However, the likelihood of an infected person contaminating commercial goods is low, and the risk of catching the virus from packages that have been moved, traveled, and exposed to different conditions and temperatures is low. Because coronavirus is highly contagious, it is essential to stay more than one meter away from a person who is sick. Keeping your distance is vital. Tests have found that it can also be spread through feces, although again, the risk appears to be low. To minimize the risk of infection this way, hand washing is crucial. At the time of this video, COVID-19 is still mostly infecting people in China, with the majority of those in Subei province. There are smaller outbreaks in other countries, in particular Northern Italy, South Korea and Iran. However, for people in most other parts of the world, the risk of getting COVID-19 is low. The total number of infected worldwide so far is around 84,000, with 2,700 recorded deaths. Because it's a virus, antibiotics do not work against coronavirus, and to date, there is no vaccine and no specific antiviral medicine to prevent or treat COVID-19, although possible vaccines and some specific drug treatments are under investigation. The demand for surgical masks in China has reached epic proportions, with an estimated 200 million masks a day being sold. So do we all need to rush out and buy a mask to protect ourselves? The answer is probably not. Experts state there is very little evidence that wearing masks in public places is beneficial, and there are a number of reasons for this. Face masks must be worn correctly, changed frequently, removed properly, disposed of safely and used in combination with good hygiene behavior in order for them to protect you against disease. And most of the paper options being worn do not have a respirator to filter out infectious particles. People with no respiratory symptoms, such as a cough, do not need to wear a medical mask. Masks only need to be worn by people who have symptoms of COVID-19 and for those caring for individuals who have symptoms. The most effective way to protect yourself from coronavirus is to frequently wash your hands and cover your mouth and nose when sneezing or coughing by using a tissue. Also avoid shaking hands or close contact with anyone who is showing symptoms and seek early medical advice by phone if you have a fever or are coughing. There is no evidence that pets such as cats and dogs have been infected or can spread the virus that causes COVID-19. It's also worth pointing out that the following measures are not effective against COVID and can be harmful. Smoking, traditional herbal remedies, wearing multiple masks or self-medicating with antibiotics. Perhaps the most worrying thing about coronavirus is how little we know about it, because right now we have no medications or vaccines for this particular strain. And while scientists are currently working on a vaccine, it's likely it won't be ready in time to combat the current outbreak. The most important message we can give you is to wash your hands frequently and use a tissue.
The official line is the source of the coronavirus is believed to be a wet market in Wuhan, which sells both dead and live animals, including fish, birds, dogs, rats, snakes, kivets, and a variety of illegal wildlife, all for human consumption. Such markets pose a heightened risk for viruses jumping from animals to human, because hygiene standards are difficult to maintain. The animals are typically in close contact with each other and are often butchered on site. This practice makes it easy for diseases like coronavirus to jump from animals to humans. The animal source of the latest outbreak has not yet been identified, but is thought to be bats. Apparently, bats were not sold at Wuhan market, but many have infected live chickens or other animals sold there. Bats are host to a wide range of viruses, including Ebola, HIV and rabies, and were also responsible for the SARS and MERS outbreaks. However, many are not buying this explanation, and China's response to the outbreak and its desire to keep it a secret has created various conspiracy theories. And even if they are not true, the actions of the Chinese government in trying to keep the truth out of the news have left people believing that they are trying to hide something. Probably the most widely believed one is that the virus originated in the Wuhan Institute of Virology, a laboratory that has a biosafety level of 4, the highest security level there is, and a place where researchers study, amongst other things, coronaviruses from bats. Obviously, the fact the laboratory is in Wuhan and only 10 minutes from the wet market has intensified this belief. Speculations have included the possibility that the virus was engineered in the lab as a bioweapon and deliberately or accidentally released, or that a lab worker was infected while handling a bat carrying the virus and then transmitted the disease to others outside the lab. The theory appears to have been backed by US Senator Tom Cotton. He is quoted as saying the following. We also know that just a few miles away from that food market is China's only biosafety level four super laboratory that researches human infectious diseases. Now, we don't have evidence that this disease originated there, but because of China's du duplicity and dishonesty from the beginning, we need to at least ask the question to see what the evidence says. And China right now is not giving any evidence on that question at all. Cotton also pointed out that the Chinese government initially turned down the US government's offer to send scientists to the country to help clarify questions about the outbreak. Of course, statements like this are bound to cause speculation that there is a cover up. However, a number of experts have taken aim at Cotton's remarks, stating that there is absolutely nothing in the genome sequence of this virus that indicates that the virus was engineered, and the possibility this was a deliberate release by a weapon can be firmly excluded. And scientists from several countries who have studied coronaviruses overwhelmingly conclude that this coronavirus originated in wildlife, just like many other viruses that have recently emerged in humans. Nonetheless, internet users do not appear to be convinced by the assurances from the experts and the rumors have spread widely online. Many have pointed out that what happened to Lee when he tried to tell the truth, some go as far to say that publicly denying the link between the lab and coronavirus could even be constructed as evidence by people who believe in this conspiracy because denial is the sign that the truth is hidden. Even the world's tabloids have touted the idea that the coronavirus is an escaped weapon and suggested that the virus was being developed as part of China's biowarfare program. In a twist to this theory, it seems author Dean Coots has eerily predicted the coronavirus outbreak in his 1981 thriller, The Eyes of Darkness. His fictional novel tells the story of a Chinese military lab that creates a new virus to potentially use as a biological weapon during wartime. The lab in the book is ironically located in Wuhan, China, and the made-up virus is called Wuhan 400. The coincidence between the book's virus and the actual coronavirus outbreak is uncanny. One of the more outlandish theories is that China's rollout of 5G is responsible for the coronavirus outbreak, suggesting that electromagnetic radiation has damaged people's immune systems and so boosted the virulence of the common cold. While there is still growing concern over 5G and its effects on humans, this one is very hard to believe. Another one that is being spread involves the world-renowned Canadian scientist Frank Plumer, 
who died unexpectedly in Kenya on the 4th of February 2020, aged 67. Dr. Plumer was most widely recognized for his groundbreaking work on understanding HIV transmission, but was also known for leadership roles in the SARS, H1N1 flu, and Ebola epidemics. He also headed up Canada's National Microbiology Laboratory in Winnipeg, where in January 2019, a Chinese biological warfare agent and some of her colleagues were dismissed after being caught smuggling coronavirus and other lethal viruses from Canada to China's Wuhan Institute of Virology in a case of biological espionage. In fact, a scientific director at Winnipeg, Frank Pluner, was the one who acquired the SARS coronavirus sample in the first place from a Saudi patient who had a previously unknown type of coronavirus in his lungs. Conspiracy theorists are putting two and two together and believe there is a link to the unexpected death of Frank and the Wuhan coronavirus outbreak. And they believe he was assassinated. Chen Kuishi and Fang Bin are citizen reporters whose video blogs from the heart of the outbreak in Wuhan show the fear, grief, and devastation caused by the coronavirus. Both men relied heavily on YouTube and Twitter to get the message to the outside world, as both platforms are blocked in China. But guess what? Now they've gone silent. In fact, they've both disappeared. Fang Bin is a clothing salesman who lives in Wuhan, he came to prominence when he released a video about the coronavirus outbreak in the city. In the weeks that followed his first upload, he recorded more videos documenting the day-to-day -day life of a city in panic. He streamed unfiltered and often heartbreaking images, showing deserted streets, long queues outside hospitals, desperately ill patients, anguished relatives, and body bags. In a country where there is a shortage of independent news sources, and where the authorities tightly control professional newspapers, these videos were brave and honest. They appeared to show the real story behind the outbreak. The videos also reflected the growing call for free speech in China. But as Mr. Fang uploaded more videos, his demeanor was changing, and they showed a man growing increasingly anxious and frustrated. On February the 2nd, Mr. Fang described how officials had confiscated his laptop and interrogated him about his footage of the body bag, and on February 4th, he filmed a group of people outside his home, who said they were there to ask him questions. He turned them away, daring them to break down his door. He seemed to be turning explicitly political in a way rarely heard inside China, at least in public. Filming from inside his house, he said plainclothes policemen surrounded him. He railed against greed for power and tyranny. His last video on February the 9th was just 12 seconds long. It featured a scroll of paper with the words, all citizens resist, hand power back to the people. After this, Fang stopped posting videos and stopped responding to calls or messages. Days earlier, another prominent video blogger, Chen Kuishi, had also gone missing. Mr. Chen's friends and family said they believe he had been forcibly quarantined. Similar to Fang, Mr. Chen recorded dozens of videos from Wuhan, but unlike Fang, he was already well known online and known to the authorities after posting videos during the pro-democracy protests in Hong Kong, when the Beijing authorities summoned him back to the mainland and deleted his social media accounts. Mr. Chan is a smart young lawyer from Eastern China who rushed to Wuhan as soon as he heard the outbreak, citing his duty as a self-declared citizen journalist. In his videos, which drew millions of views on YouTube, Mr. Chen carried out interviews with locals who had lost loved ones and filmed quarantine areas. He was later blocked from WeChat, a major Chinese social media app, for spreading rumors, but he remained adamant that he shared only what he himself had seen or heard. Just like Fang, as time went on, Chen's usual energetic delivery began to show tension. On February the 6th, 2020, Mr. Chen's friends lost contact with him it's claimed that he has been quarantined despite not showing any symptoms. At the time of writing this, no one has any idea where Mr. Fang or Mr. Chen are, but it's widely believed they have been silenced. The question is, why?
So what's really going on with coronavirus? Do you think it's been man-made in a lab and either accidentally or deliberately distributed? Or do you believe the official line that it originated in bats and has spread throughout the practice of unhygienic wet markets and the consumption of wildlife? Or is there another explanation that we haven't covered? Is coronavirus any more deadly than the flu? After all, seasonal flu kills between 300,000 and 650,000 people worldwide every year. Or is the panic that seems to be circulating around the world the result of social media hysteria and panic reporting? It does seem unprecedented, the measures that are being put in place to stop the spread of this disease, that if we believe the experts, is no more deadly than the flu. Is there more to this virus than we are being told? Or is it an overreaction? We do not know, we are just bringing you what is being reported, and hopefully spreading some awareness on Mr. Fang and Mr. Chen. Stay safe, and let us know your thoughts in the comments.